Today we're going to be doing something slightly different. We're going to be building a product from ground zero. The thing we're going to be building is a Pokemon database. So we're going to be scraping the website over here. It's called PokemonDB.net. And we're going to get all the data for every Pokemon in the database. The data is going to include the avatar, name, types, and all the different kind of stats for the Pokemon. Once we get the scraper running, we are going to uh, write the scrape data to a MongoDB database. Um, you can see this is a sample that I have running already. So the data is going to be persisted in this MongoDB database. And later on in a different episode, we're going to hook up this data to an actual working Pokedex. Uh, so yeah, that's the demo for you. And now let's go into the text tag that we're going to be using. So the first thing we're going to be using is, uh, so the programming language we'll use is Python. We're going to be using Python's beautiful soup package to do the scraping. Uh, so the package gives you a bunch of utility functions that make scraping very, very easy. Apart from that, we're going to be using PyMongo to do our basic writing and connecting to a MongoDB database. And we're going to be using a bunch of other utility functions to make our job uh, slightly easier. So overall, we're going to be using Python and MongoDB as the database. So yeah, let's get started then. The first thing I have for you here is a directory called Pokemon Data Scraper. Uh, we have two files here called config.py and scraper.py. Config.py is where I have all the configuration. So this contains a lot of AWS secrets, MongoDB connection URL. So a lot of sensitive, sensitive data, but they're all in the form of strings. We are going to be directly importing in the scraper.py. So I don't think we'll need to look at that file. Apart from that, we have the scraper.py file itself, where we're going to write our scraper. I went ahead and created a virtual environment for you guys so that uh, we can go through all the packages, installing and everything from scratch uh, so that you all have a clear idea of how to start from nothing and end up building the product. So the first thing we're going to do now that we have a virtual environment is to install the packages that we need. So I'm going to start with the first package, with, which is going to be our PyMongo. So we're going to do a pip three install PyMongo. So this is going to, oh, we need to source it at first. So let's do the sourcing. There you go. So we're going to going into the virtual environment first. Once I'm inside the virtual environment, let me install PyMongo at first. So this is going to give us the ability to connect to the MongoDB database. And then we're going to uh, go ahead and do beautiful soup. So we're going to do pip3 install, I think it's called beautiful soup. Uh, maybe it's called BS4. There you go. So that's our beautiful soup. And then I think those two are the only packages we're going to start with. So yeah, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is actually make the request. So we're gonna have a URL, which is gonna be our URL over here, right? So let's have that URL over here. So this is gonna be our pokemondb.net, which gives us all the Pokemon data over here. And then we're going to create our request object over here so this is right now we're just basically parsing uh, we're gonna basically just call the endpoint uh, call the website over there one thing we want to make sure is we have request imported so we're gonna let's just do our imports over here so we're gonna do from url lib dot request import request and we're going to also import URL open, which is another function we're going to need down the road. And while we're here, let's also import our beautiful soup classes that we would need. So we're going to this one. 
All right, so now that we have the request class here, let's go ahead and give it the URL. And we're going to give it some headers. The reason you need to do this is when the website understand without a user agent, the website you're scraping will know that it's from coming from a bot and it might just return a 500 or something instead of the data itself. So you want to fake being a user and the way you do that is just by passing a user agent with the request. So we're going to give it just a browser user agent so we can give it Mozilla 5.0 and then this is the request object and then to actually uh, send the request you can use URL open and give it the request over here. This is going to return to you the request itself which you want to read at first so we do the reading here with dot read and this is going to return to you the whole page in bytes and now you want to take the bytes and convert it into a string that you can parse so we're just going to do with the page html and then we do the page content bytes and then we decode the byte as utf8 string so this is going to return to you uh, the whole page is html so this is a good time for us to try it out so let's just print whatever we are getting i'm going to run it over here so we're going to run scraper.com no module name url lib uh, we forgot to uh, install the package so let's just do a pip3 install url lib all right what's happening here uh, pip3 install did I spell it wrong? Oh yeah, so I did spell this wrong. This is going to be URL lib.request. Perfect. So now let's run it over here. And you see all these, this is the HTML of the page we just scraped, right? So we know that's working, but what we want to do now is uh, pass this whole HTML to beautiful soup which is going to format this data in a very nice way for us to be able to scrape it very, very easily. So let's get rid of the print statement here. And then let's instantiate our beautiful soup with our page HTML. And you have to tell it with what kind of parser you want. So we want the HTML parser. Uh, yeah, and then now that we have this HTML parser, what we could do is something very straightforward. So if you look at the HTML structure over here, this is pretty much a table, right? So we can look at the source here. So if you look at the source over here, we're just going to do this. I'll just show you what I mean. There you go. All right, so this is the table, right? So the whole thing is pretty much a table with the ID of Pokédex. And that's the first reference we need to do our scraping. So let's go back over here and let's see how can we get all the rows from the table, right? So we can do Pokémon rows equals and this is where the helpful functions of beautiful soup comes in. You can do something just as soup.findAll. And then you can give it the element that you're looking for, table. And then you can give it the ID of that element you're looking for. Right, so let's see. What is this doing? This is telling beautiful soup that go through the entire page HTML and give me all the table elements with an ID of Pokédex. So over here you can see that we have the table ID, table with an ID of Pokédex. And it's gonna give give all of them to you. Um, so you wanna like take one of them and in our case it's gonna be the first one because in this page you don't really see any other tables. So we can just do zero over here. 
and then see what we're getting, right? Let's just do, let's print it out. And run the scraper. It's gonna take a while. And yeah, so there you go. You're getting the whole thing. And if you go all the way to the top, let's just go all the way to the bottom. And you see the ending is table. So that means you're only getting the whole table element. Now let's see within the table element, what do we want? So if we, if we go back to the table, we see we have T head. So this is the header where you have name, type, total, and all the stats. And then you have T body. If you look at T body, looks like that is your whole table data encapsulated in the T body. So let's go one level deeper. So within the T body, you can see individual rows for each of the Pokemon. So let's find a way to go to this T body and then get all of the rows and store them in our variable uh, Pokemon rows over here, right? So we're gonna, now that we have the table itself, within that, we're gonna find all the T body. And then we're gonna take the first one because we pretty much want the first one. And then within the T body, we're gonna find all the table rows. So let's run through this once again. The first thing we're doing is finding a table element with an ID of Pokedex. So that would be the table element with an ID of Pokedex. Within the table element, you have a T head and the T body. We don't want the T head because we know uh, that's not Pokemon data. We want the T body. And this is giving us the T body over here. Once again, we're taking the first element from all the T body. It's returning. So we're getting this element only. And then within that element, we have all these Pokemon rows. So we're just doing a find all. And now your Pokemon rows will have all those TR elements. To give you an idea, if we print it out now. Yeah, if we print it out, you see we get all the T rows over here. So one T row, two T row. So all of them are the are the rows that we're getting. And you can see it's a list. So now we should have all our Pokemon rows and we can start iterating through them, right? So let's get rid of this. And then for uh, let's just go through a normal for loop. So it's going to be for Pokemon and Pokemon rows. Uh, so it's going to be for Pokemon and Pokemon rows. Mm, we, let, let's see what we're looking at, right? Let's go to the table row. So within a row, everything is a TD, so a table data tag, right? So we have one TD for the avatar, one TD for the name, one TD for the types, and one TD for each of the stats. So let's get all of the TD first, right? So let's go over here, and then we're gonna do a Pokemon data equals for each row, give me all the uh, TD uh, tags that we have. So this should give for every Pokemon, this should give us all this TD rows. So check it out. We're gonna just look at, we're just gonna look at one of, so we can just break out of the loop. So this way we can just debug our scraper with only one Pokemon, right? So now let's run the scraper. Uh, we need to print it out. There you go. And yeah, so you can see we get a list of all the TD elements that we need. So you can see the stats over here. You can see the image over here. And you can also see uh, the number of Pokemon over here. So all the data is for the first Pokemon is over here. So now it's a matter of scraping this t these TD elements properly and then storing each of the data in the variables. So the first thing, if we go back 
here. The first thing we want to do is the ID for a Pokemon, right? So let's look at the first TD. So you can see the first TD has two span. One is uh, the image and the other is the number 001. Right, so if we if we expand it, you can see we have uh, the span and another span. If we collapse it again, and one important thing to see over here is if you look at the first TD over here, you see the data sword value property, which is one right now. If you look at the next Pokemon, that's going to be two. If you look at the next one, that's going to be three. And then a few more maybe. You can see another three. That's because both Venusaur and Mega Venusaur has the same Pokedex entry, which is three. And you'd expect then it to be four. And as you go, the number increases. So we can use that data sword value, this property over here, as the ID of the Pokemon in the Pokedex. So let's go back over here and then we're going to keep, uh, so we have all the data uh, and then within all of them, so we have all the TD tags and now we're going to look at the first one, right? Because if I go back up and then let's just get uh, collapse all these. Okay, so now we're looking at one row at a time. And within the row, we're looking at the first TD. So we want the first table data's data sword value property, right? So let's see how you want to do that. So we want to say ID equals Pokemon data has all our TD. We want the first one. And then within the first one, you can just index like this. This should give you the property. Uh, that we want. So let's just print it out over here. Just show it. I show you that it's working. Okay. Error. Let's see. So we have the Pokemon data, and we're getting all the TD. Oh yeah. So this should be our Pokemon data. Our Pokemon. Mm -hmm. There you go. And yeah, you see we get the number one, which is the first Pokemon in the. Uh, in the list. So we know that's working, so we have ID working. Now let's look at avatar, right? So if you're looking at avatar, we're still looking at the first row. So the avatar is gonna be still in the first row. So the first DD has two span and we want the span and within the span we want the source property right we want the source property over here which is going to give us the uh which is going to give us the the url of the avatar so let's take a second over here right so we want to look at another thing here which is going to be so we have one span here another span here right all right so let's go back over here and then we want to now take the avatar which is going to be pokemon data again and we take the first td within that we want to find all the span take the second span and then take the data source property and if we print it out, let's see what we're getting. And yeah, as you can see, we can get the image over here. And if you just copy paste it in a new one, there you go. You see a small little Bulbasaur over here. So we have the avatar working now. Now let's move on to the next element. Now let's look at the name itself, right? So we have, let's just collapse these. Okay, so the name is in the second uh, table data and it's within an A tag and it's the text within the A tag. That's where the name is. So 
let's just do name we can do pokemon data we're going to the second row now and then we're finding all the a tags taking the first one and then getting the text this is a new function get text which pretty much returns to you the text within that attribute so we're going to the second TD finding the a tag taking the first a tags in this case there's only gonna be one but you still have to go and get that one from the list and then dot get text is giving you the text over here which is Bulbasaur so this should be working let's see if this is all right there you go so we have Bulbasaur over here all right so we have the ID avatar and name so let's see what's the next thing that we want so the next thing that we want is the details URI right so the details URI is going to be if I go back over here let me just not okay so if you look at the name the name is clickable right you have always are clickable over here so that should be within the a tag it should be the href that should give you the link so let's see if we can do that right so what we could do is we could just do details uri equals pokemon data one dot find so we're doing the same thing pretty much find all a tag we're taking the first one and then this is where it gets uh, interesting so to get the property remember before we just did data sort value similarly you can just do href over here this should give you the href and we're going to try it out over here all right yeah so you're getting pokedex slash bulbasaur which if you append at the end of the pokedex should give you uh, the path to that so we have the details uri right now and yeah uh, let's see what's next all right the next thing we're going to take a look at is a slight variation of the name so if you look at row 3 and row 4 over here we have Venusaur and Mega Venusaur so we want to get data for both right so if we're only getting the name it's going to be just two Venusaurs which is not what we want we want one name to be Venusaur and the other to be Mega Venusaur let's see how we can do that so if we look at the row let's just look at the Mega Venusaur here right so for table data there you go so we were getting everything from the a tag over here right but if there's the name at the bottom so something like Mega Venusaur we're going to have a small tag over here which will have the name so let's put some conditional statements in our code to account for these this right so let's say the name here uh, we're just getting it right but however after we get it we want to do the same thing so we're going to do Pokemon data one and then we're going to find all the small tags right this is the small over here so this is the small but if you look at the other row and the second there is no small tag over here you only have a small tag over here so we could just find the small tag and then this will return to us the small tag if it's there if not it's going to return to us an empty list so if it does return as a list with the small tag we're going to instead uh, get the name from the small tag right so we're going to get the small tag we're going to get the first one and then we're going to get the get text right so let's print the name again and then let's just do a few let's do zero through five right all right uh, we are breaking let's not break over here all right 
so we have Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Venusaur, and then we get Mega Venusaur. We're getting this from the small tag over here, uh, not the name tag. Because if we only had line 22 over here, then we would have had Venusaur and then another Venusaur. So now we know that we're getting all the names correctly, right? And yeah, let's move on to the next attribute. So the next one is types. We want to get the Pokemon's types properly, right? So let's just bunch all these together and then let's look at types. So let's go back to the first row. So uh, we got the Pokedex ID from the first TD. The second one gave us the name, the variation of the name, and the URI for the details of the Pokemon. And now we're going to look at the third TD. So in the third TD, which has the types, you can see for every type we have an A tag. And the A tag and has a text, which is the type itself. So we can easily go to this TD, get all the A tags, which is going to return to us these two. And for each of the A tags, we can just go and get the text. So let's see how we want to do that. So we know a Pokemon can have multiple types. So we're going to just uh, create a list. And then we're going to just go Pokemon type. And so Pokemon data, which is all our rows of data, of that Pokemon's data. We go to the third one. And then we find all the A tag. So this is going to return to us these two A tags for every Pokemon. And then for each of the A tag, we want to just get the text, right? So we want to just do a type start append. And then we want to just do Pokemon type, which is the A tag. And then we just want to get the text from the A tag, right? And then let's print it out. Uh, let's print the name and the text. There you go. So we have Bulbasaur, which is grass and poison. We have Ivysaur, grass and poison. Venusaur, same. Mega Venusaur, same. And then for Charmander, we have fire. It had one A tag and we have one type over here. So there you go. We got the types working now too. And now comes the easy part, which is getting all the stats. So let's look at the stats, right? So for each of the stat, the TD over here gives you the total base stat, and then we get attack, HP, defense, all of them, right? So it's pretty straightforward. If you look at them, all of them are just TD tags, and the number itself is the text of the TD tag. So we can just get the text from each of these TD tags. So let's just do all of them at once, which is going to make it easy for us. So let's do total, which is going to be each of them. So this is starting from three, and then we're just going to go one after the other. So let's just create a bunch, and then total, and then we have attack, and then we have defense, and then we have special attack, we have special defense, and we have speed. Right, and so they're back to back, right? We have total HP, attack, defense, all of them. So we're just going to change the number over here. So we have four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now let's print them out to see if we got them correctly, right? So we're going to print the name of the uh, Pokemon, and then we're going to just print all the stats over here. All right, and let's see if we are getting them correctly or not. If you have followed up to this point, uh, this part is the most straightforward. Yeah, so for Bulbasaur, we get 318, 45, 49, 49. That is 318, 45, 49, 49. And then we should get 65, 65, 45. We have 65, 65. We don't have 45. That means we just missed, missed one. So we have total, we missed HP, I believe. Yes, we missed HP. 
So we can just do a HB over here, which is going to be 4. And then let's just change these numbers, just increase them by 1. There you go. And now if we run it, I believe now we're getting all 60 over 45, 60 over 45, and then before we had 318. We're still missing one though, right? Uh, let's see which one we're missing. So we have total, which is the third, HP is the fourth, attacks the fifth, defense the sixth. Oh, I think we just did not print it out, right? Yeah, we just did not print it out. There you go. Now we should get all of them. And this is now we get all of the stats. So now we pretty much have all the data in that one page. So we got the ID. We got a link to the avatar, we got the name, we got the name of the variation, if it, if it is a variation. We got the URI to the details of the Pokemon. We got all the types and all the necessary stats. So the next thing we want to do is get that Pokedex entry that I showed you, remember? For a given Pokedex, we have the entry over here. So let's see how we want to do that. So clearly the entry is not available over here, but if you pay attention, if you click on a Pokemon, it takes you to the URI over here, right? So pay attention to the URI here. It is Pokedex and then Bulbasaur, right? After the main domain. So remember we scraped uh, details URI. So let's see how that's looking for every Pokemon. So we're just going to print the details URI. Each of them has slash Pokedex slash the name of the Pokemon. Slash Pokedex slash name of the Pokemon. So why don't we go ahead and scrape the page itself. So the individual page for every Pokemon. Right? It's going to be very, very similar to what we did over here. The scrape our web page. Uh, right? Okay, so let's see how we want to do it. So let's get rid of this. Right? So the first thing we're going to do is the new URL for every Pokemon. Which is going to be a formatted string, which is going to be the, uh, the host here. And then it's going to have our details URI. So remember the details URI for every Pokemon was slash Pokedex Bulbasaur. So essentially it's going to be the host and then for every Pokemon it's going to be the URI. So it becomes this, which is the URI we want. So you have the entry URL and then that's very similar to what we did, which is create a request object with the entry URL and headers, which is going to be the user agent. It's going to be pretty much a repeat of what we did above. Uh, this is the same thing you do whenever you are scraping a page. Then we have the HTML of the page, which is going to be the request, and then we're going to read it and then decode it. And then once we decode it, the HTML, we are just going to put it in the beautiful soup object to let us use all those amazing functions. Uh, so we're gonna see this one is string, this is going to be the entry page HTML. And you need it you need to tell it the parser you're using, which is the HTML parser. Right? And then um, within the HTML parser, uh, actually let's see what we're getting at first, right? So let's just print the soup over here. Let's not do it for all of them because it's going to take some time. We're just going to do it for two of the Pokemons. Mm, yeah, let's see what we're getting. Uh, and let's also just do the Pokemon name. And let's do the URI. Actually, let's do the entry URL so that you can see which uh, URL we're scraping. So a lot of data. So this is this is returning to you. The, you see the whole page. So uh, it's a toxic Pokemon. Uh, it returns to you the generations information, all the moves it has, and everything. 
So it pretty much you get data for this whole page, which is a lot more data than we're going to scrape in this video over here. So let's see. What we want is one of the Pokedex entries over here, right? So let's see. Go to Pokedex entries, and the table here is called responsible, uh, responsive scroll, right? So how can we get that? So one thing we could do is we could just, so it's a div that's called rest scroll. And then within the div, we have the vital stable table. So we could try getting this div first. And then from that div, I think we can get the table. Would that be the best way to do this? Let's let's give that a go, right? Let's give that a go. Let's try to get the div over here and then get the table. So we want to find the div with the class rest scroll. So let's do that. So we know that the entry soup is giving us the whole page of the Pokemon's entry. So we're going to do entry text equals entry soup dot find all. We want to at first go and get the, so if you look at all the divs over here, we want to at first get the main tag, right? Because we, we don't really care about all the nav and everything. All our data is in the grid. So at first, let's get that main tag. So we can just get the main tag and then get the first element. And now that we are within the main tag, we are going to go all the way down and then grab the div over here. So we're gonna find the div. And now there's a new thing here. So let's see how can we find the div of a particular class. So you use the same find all function, but you give it the div over here and then you give it a class. You have a dictionary and then let's just format it better. And then in the dictionary, you can give it like a lot of properties. So you're essentially saying, find me all the div with the class rest scroll. Uh, and let's see what we're getting, right? Let's see how many divs have that class over here. Mm. So we're just going to do a length of that. Let's see what we're getting. Oh, we have 13. We have 13 different ones uh, with the same class name. So we could go through like all of them and find the different, uh, find which one we need. But I did the work for you before and I know that it's the third Rust scroll which actually has the data over here. It's still slightly tricky. I can get to that later on. But for now, uh, we could, um, if you want, you can like go through one by one but I've done it before and I know that you need number two, which is the third, sorry. So you need over here, so you need the number two, so the third one. So let's see if we get that and then get the entry text over here. We're gonna remove this. What would that look like? Uh, find all. Oh, so we had to take the first mean. Here we go. And then, yes, so as you can see, this is the text that we wanted. Exposure to sunlight adds to its strength. So you're getting all of them. Right? Uh, a strange seed was planted at its back. So you, you're getting all the Pokedex entry in this one. So now that we're getting the div over here, we know that we're getting the div. So within that we have a table, the body of the table, and then the rows with each of the entry. So just to make it simple, we're just gonna take the first one, right? We're just gonna get the first table row within the div over here. So how do we do that? So we already have the div over here. So this is gonna get a bit messy. So. We're gonna find all our table row 
get the first one. So we're getting the first table row. Within that we have a header, which is red or blue, not what we care about. And then a TD, which is the text. So we can just get the text of that TD. So we find the table row, we take the first one. Within that we find the TD, get the first one, and then we do a get text. Now let's see what we're getting. There you go. We get a, stra a strange seed was planted on its back at birth. The plant sprouts and grows. So it's the exact same thing that we have over here. Except looks like we got some extra data. Did we? So we're doing zero to, oh, so we were scripting two, zero and one, right? So this is like the uh, Bulbasaur and the Nibisaur. But one interesting thing here, uh, so you know how we pretty much hard coded the number two over here. This is not very robust. If we wanted to get all the entries in a very robust way, we would have needed to do some more tricks to find the exact index. Because if I expand it, let's say instead of only scraping two, we're scraping like six, right? And then let's do the name of the Pokemon and then the entry. Uh, yeah, so for Bulbasaur, we're getting the entry. For Ivysaur, we're getting the entry. For Venusaur and Mega Venusaur, we're getting the number 80, right? So let's see if we can see what we're actually getting. So let's just go to Venusaur. And let's search for the number 80. So we have HP 80, speed, yeah, so we're getting one of the numbers from over here. My guess would be we have, we're have we getting the number over here because this is a table. We're getting the first row. And I, I'm pretty sure this is the same div class that we, is it? Or, no, it's not. But yeah, as you can see, for some of the Pokemon, this hard code is not going to work. So for now, what we're going to do is just put it in a try accept in case we get 80 or we are running into an error. We just don't want to store the entry for that Pokemon. Uh, later on, we can find a robust way to do this. So let's just wrap it in a try and then an accept. So we're just going to do print and then let's say could not find Pokemon entry text of and then the name of the Pokemon. This is going to let us uh, know how many are we missing out on. And then we can just set entry text for those to like an empty string. Right, uh, there you go. Mm, okay, so now uh, if we're running into error while getting trying to get the, Poke the Pokedex entry, we're just going to set it to empty string. Right, so now for every Pokemon, we should have most of the data that we need. Let's see if we got all the data, right? So let's go here. We got the ID, we got the name, we got the avatar, the details path, we got the types, total, HP, attack, defense, special attack, special defense, speed, and entry. So yeah, we're done scraping all the data. So the next thing we want to do is just create an object to make uh, presenting the data easy. So we can just go ahead and uh, we can just go ahead and do from typing import list and named tuple. And then we can just do a class of Pokemon, which is gonna be a named tuple. What fields, we're gonna have an ID, which is int. We're gonna have a name, that's a string. Avatar, that is another string. The details path, which is another string. Types is gonna be a list of string. We have the total, HP, attack. These are all the stats, all of them are int. Defense, special attack, 
special defense, speed, and finally the entry, which is going to be a string. This is going to let us uh, make the visualization significantly easier. So now that we have all the data, we just need to create our uh, Pokemon object, uh, the name Pebble, I mean. So let's just do type Pokemon. And then it's just going to be a Pokemon with uh, ID is going to be the end of ID. Name is going to be name. Avatar equals avatar. Details path, it's going to be details URI. Then we have types, which is going to be types. We have total for each of them. When we scrape even a number, we get a string form version of it. So we want to cast it to a, a number. So we're going to cast it to an int and do total. And then it's going to be pretty repetitive over here. So we're going to do attack which is going to be attack or I'm just going to go ahead and do a few of them. Then we're going to do attack defense, which is going to be defense. And then we have special attack, which is going to be special attack. We have special defense, which was going to be special defense over here and then we had speed which was going to be speed and then finally we had entry which was going to be the entry text let's just give all the commas over here to make the program happier there you go so now let's try printing our typed pokemon and we are how many do we how many are we scraping we are scraping five to six okay so let's go i believe we have a print statement somewhere but we don't want to have a print statement uh let's see what's happening we save it uh, it's giving us the TD. Why is it going to give us the TD? Um, let's see. What's the entry text? Uh, oh, we're printing Pokemon. We should be printing the typed Pokemon. Alright. So if we're printing the typed Pokemon, there you go. So for each of the entry, we can see all the data formatted correctly. One thing to call out would be, uh, remember for Mega Venusaur, Venusaur, for some of the Pokemon, the entry is not correct. We can come back to that later on because that would require some more tweaking of the scraper, which makes things more complicated. So I don't want to make it complex unnecessarily because for majority of the Pokemon, we should be able to get the entry. Uh, so yeah, this should give us the entry for all the Pokemon and now what we could do is we could just try for a bunch. So let's just do 0 to 100 and then what we could do is we could just do, we could just have a count here called scraped count and then set it to 0 and then every time it finishes it it should do scrape down plus equals one and then we're going to scrape for a hundred pokemon so let's just make sure the scrape is working let it run for a bit am i i'm not printing the count am i all right so let's go ahead and print the count too this is going to help us visualize the whole thing much, much better. So now let's do it. So we're starting from one. It's going and scraping all the Pokemon that's there. We're going to let it run for a few minutes. Oh, you'll see we're going to hit 100 very quickly. This is going to give us some confidence into the uh, 
scraper working. Yep, we crunched through 100 pretty easily. And for most of them, we should have what we want. So we have Kadabra with the entry and everything. For some of them, you'll see the entry is empty. That is because we put a try except over here. Once again, there is a way to do it, but it gets complex very quickly. And I wanted this to be more of a basic video of how to do web scraping. So yeah, we're getting the data for all the Pokemon, uh, all 100 Pokemon. So now comes the other part, which is how do we write this into the MongoDB database, right? So the first thing would be uh, to have the data structure to actually hold all the data so that we don't have to scrape every time. So if we go all the way to the top, let's do this. Let me just create a uh, scraped Pokemon data, which is going to be a list, right? And then what we could do is I could just append it at the end. So we have the typed Pokemon. After that, we could just do scraped Pokemon data dot append. So this way uh, we can like um, just like print it out or just look at the data whenever uh, we're inserting it to the database. And uh, yeah, that should be all our data of the Pokemon. Now let's do the second part, which is going to be actually writing to the MongoDB database. So how do we set up the MongoDB database? Now let's look at that. So the first thing we need is PyMongo. So we can do PyMongo. From PyMongo, we want to import the Mongo client. And then remember the config file I showed you, um, which has all the URI and other secrets. I'm not showing it in the video over here because it's using my own MongoDB account. Um, but it's a pretty straightforward Python file with a bunch of strings. So we can do from config import the MongoDB client URI. This is going to give us the client URI, which is pretty much a string that you use to connect to your MongoDB cluster. And I think that's pretty much all the packages and imports you would need. After that, let's actually connect to the MongoDB client. So we're going to do a Mongo client with the URI. And then um, now once you're hooked up to the client, you want to get the database. So in this case, we're going to just, so if you look at the MongoDB over here, YouTube is our database and then Pokemon is our collection. So we're gonna connect to the same database called YouTube. So we're doing .youtube. And then we can do Pokemon collection, db.pokemon, right? So if we do db.pokemon, that would mean go to the YouTube database and then create a collection called Pokemon. So we already have that, right? So we wanna like create a new one. So we could just call it Pokemon new. So they should create a new one called Pokemon New. So at this point, we should be connected to the MongoDB client. We should have a reference to the YouTube database. And within the database, we should have a new collection called Pokemon New. A collection, look at it as a table in MySQL. Uh, so the Pokemon New is going to be our table. And each row is going to be the data of each Pokemon. So we have the DB and the Pokemon collection. And now let's see how you want to write to it. So if, I don't know how familiar y'all are with the MongoDB database, but if you look at the example over here, it's pretty much each row is a JSON object with all the properties that you give it uh, to write. MongoDB does not have a fixed schema like MySQL does where it needs to have 13 rows. So it you pretty much give it a JSON blob with a key and it stores the whole key, uh, the, all the data for you. So uh, let's see, we have the collection over here. Let's copy that. And then we have the typed Pokemon over here. Let's get rid of that. And then what we could just do is you give it the collection. You just have the function insert one. 
This inserts one document into the collection. And then you pass it a JSON object with whatever data you want. So we want an ID, which is going to be the ID of our typed Pokemon. We want the name, which is going to be the name of the typed Pokemon. We want the avatar. Uh, there you go. Oops. Um, there you go. And then we want the details path. We're just going to be the typed Pokemon's details path. We're going to get a bunch of these because it's pretty much copy pasting. We have types. Uh, yeah, and then we have total. It's pretty much a rinse and repeat of the same thing. And then we have attack. What else do we have? Defense. Mm, there you go. Special attack and special defense. Attack and special defense. And then we have speed over here. So, and then the last one we have is the entry. Right, so this should insert a row for every Pokemon we're scraping over here. So we should have uh, as many rows as Pokemon that we're scraping, right? Uh, so what we could do is we could uh, run it. So let's let's do this. Let's put a bunch of print statements at the end. So we're just gonna. I'm just gonna do a print, and then this is gonna be right at the end, right? And we're gonna just do it done, and it's gonna be done, and then we're gonna print. We're gonna print the length of the script Pokemon data. So at the end, we're gonna get a done message, and then it's gonna give us the number of Pokemon it scraped. And then we can look at the database and see if we have that many entries, uh, which would make sure, which would tell us that all the Pokemon has been scraped. And just to make sure we know every, as we're scraping the Pokemon, the count is going by one. We could just do a print over here. Are we doing scrape count plus equals one? We're not doing it. So after every scrape, we should increment the counter. And let's also do the name of the Pokemon. And uh, uh, let, let's do a formatted string with the name of the Pokemon. And then scraped count should be the scraped count. Uh, so we can just do a scraped so far, right? So now we're gonna run it and we should get a print statement with the name of the Pokemon and how many Pokemon we have scraped. It should go through all 1000 Pokemons. And then at the end, it should return to us a done and give us the total number of Pokemon it scraped. Uh, we're gonna re remove the print statement over here so that we can keep track of everything better. I'll show you the database. Let me just refresh this so that we know that it doesn't exist right now. So yeah, in the YouTube uh, database, uh, database, you can send the one collection called Pokemon. And our new data should go in a collection called Pokemon New. So let's see what happens. So we're gonna run our scraper. Oopsie. Uh, ah, okay, so to connect to the MongoDB client using the URI like I am, you need to download another package called DNS Python. So let's just do that. Pip3 install DNS Python. That should be it. Now let's run it again. Uh, let's just clear it and then run it over here. And yeah, we started scraping. So we are the it's not complaining when it's writing to MongoDB, but at the end we can verify the data to make sure it's there. Um, it's now for every Pokemon it's scraping. At first, it's scraping the page over here. For every Pokemon, it's taking the whole row. 
and then once it's done scraping the data it's going into the page and then grabbing the text from here and it's going to do it for all the Pokemon. If we did not put a limit of 100 which I'm pretty sure we put somewhere over here. So let's just get rid of it. Let's actually look at the table to see if it was actually getting the data, writing the data, right? We're refreshing the same MongoDB cluster. And there you go. We have all our new Pokemons over here. And we have a total of 100 documents for 100 Pokemon. So we're going to delete this collection for now so that we do it from scratch again. All right, there you go, we're back to only Pokemon. And we're gonna run our scraper again, this time with all of the rows. So we're gonna let it run for a few minutes. And just to recap that, now it's scraping the whole page once, this whole page once. And then for every row, it's scraping all this data and then going into each of these pages and then scraping the first row over here on a best effort basis because we saw some of them errored out for the sake of keeping things simple uh, but yeah so it's gonna take a while because we're going to be scraping um, it, it would have been pretty straightforward if we only scraped this page but now it's uh, for every pokemon it's going to that uh, individual Pokemon page so we have like how many we have like 898 and that is just the number of Pokemon then you have the variations of each like uh, Urshifu has like two variations over here so it should be around like 1100 Pokemon and imagine like doing it manually where you're like either like going one by one writing all these down clicking through going to the page and then getting like the entry from here it's a lot of work to do manually so you want to make the scraper do it and it's going to do it relatively quickly uh, we're already up to 300 but yeah scraping is very good for websites that has a pretty fixed uh, web structure so like this every page has the same structure so instead of doing things manually you can just write a bot that does it for you once you have the Pokemon data you can do multiple things with it you can like create your own app on top of the data so right now we got like very little data we only got like the basic information and the Pokedex entry you can see the amount of data you could have gotten you could have gotten the height the weight the ability of the Pokemon, all the breeding information, you have the type, it's strong against and weak against, evolutions there, all the entries, we're getting just one, it has all the moves, even by like different games, egg moves, it's like a bunch of data, so if you really wanted to create a very very detailed database you could easily do it by just adding a few new features to the existing scraper that I showed you once you have the data you could either create an API to expose the data to the outside world monetize it by making people pay for the data that they get from you and you could build your own app on top of it if you wanted to um, so there's a bunch of things you could do once you already have the data and this is only for Pokemon data. You can do it for like any sports website, any kind of news articles. I'll have a bunch of videos coming later on uh, with like different use cases of these website scraping. But for starters, uh, this is not a bad one to use because it's pretty straightforward to scrape this website. A few other plans I have after the scraping videos out is actually use the data to create a Pokédex. Uh, we're gonna create our own search index on top of MongoDB and then have like something called Amazon Poly which is pretty much a text to speech engine. So we can use that to like tell like the whole entry 
with all the data that we scraped, which is going to be pretty cool. Uh, so I'll have that out in uh, one of the next videos. So let's see, how are we doing? So we're on Talonflame. So you know, we're almost there. We're hitting 800. And it took what, like four to five minutes maybe? Whereas if we were to do this whole thing manually, it would be like a lot, lot more challenging. So give it a few more minutes for the scrape to finish. And then we're gonna verify the data. So if you look at the uh, count over here, we should have a count every time we scrape a Pokemon. And then if you look at any database, it tells you how many entries the collection has. So for example, Pokemon, which was the final product I showed you at the beginning, had 1045 individual documents. Look at documents as individual rows. And our new scraper should create a new collection called Pokemon New, and it should also have 1045 documents. So we're going to verify the numbers uh, once it's done. Yeah, see, we have hit way more than the actual number because if you look at the Pokedex over here, we had 898, but we have scraped like 1045. That's because of all the variations a Pokemon can have. So, yeah, we have done and we scraped 1045 Pokemon. So now let's go and look at the data over here. And this has a new collection, Pokemon New, with 1045. And if we check it out, there you go. We have all the Pokemon over here, Bulbasaur, Ivysaur. Most of them will have a Pokedex entry. Uh, let's, uh, and then it has the avatar. So let's just see if the data is correct. So if we go to the avatar over here. There you go. You, it's working. And then you have the details URI, which is just going to be appended at the end of the host. I'm just going to get rid of this. And yeah, that's working too. So yeah, we have data for all 1045 Pokemon now, and you can use the data however uh, you feel like using it. Oh, so this is a good example. So for Sandslash, we have both Sandslash and the Alolan sand slash, and you can see the stats are slightly different. So the normal sand slash had a special defense of 45, whereas the Alolan one has 25. So we're getting the different variations too. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much all. That's the scraper for you. Uh, the next plans I have is using the data we just scraped. My plan is to create a Pokedex uh, backend only. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the MongoDB's own search indexing. I think it uses the Lucene index to do it. And we're going to create an index so that we make our Pokemon data very easily searchable. And then we're going to use Pi Audio uh, to let the user give an audio input. So you can tell the program what Pokemon you want the data for and it should give you the data in an audio format. So we're going to use something called Amazon Poly to do a text-to-speech conversion. So you're going to input, so you're going to say out loud the Pokemon you want the data for, and then uh, the Lucene Index is going to do its magic and find the data very, very quickly. We're going to format like a paragraph uh, with all the information, for Amazon Polly to read it out to you and the whole thing should be very very quick. So yeah, I'll wait for that video. It should be coming up sometime next week. Until then, have a good one. Bye bye.